Hey all, today we're looking at this. This is the Blue Retro Wireless Adapter for the Nintendo GameCube from RetroScaler. So this is hardware from RetroScaler and it runs the open source uh, Blue Retro uh, firmware. This is pretty cool because it lets you use a variety of controllers such as PlayStation, Switch Pro controllers, Xbox controllers, and other wireless controllers that you may want to try. And it has upgradable firmware. I got the black one. Now this is a sponsored video. I got this from AliExpress. More on them in a bit. So let's just open it up. I have not opened this one yet. Inside we get our manual and we have our adapter just like that so it is just a little nub of a thing uh, that plugs into our gamecube and this is what it looks like uh, when compared with the wave bird it's similar in depth although much shorter than the wave bird anyway Let's take a look at this, but first, a word from our sponsor, AliExpress. I just wanna give a big shout out to our sponsor, AliExpress, who provided me with this GameCube controller adapter. Everything you see here has something to do with AliExpress. Whether it's replacement shells for your Nintendo DS, replacement screens for your Game Boy Color, headphones, home automation equipment, office gear such as this label printer for shipping. And don't forget that you can find a link to this product in the video description below. And you can save between two and $15 on orders between 25 and $150. Full details again in the description below. And be sure to use my code to get those savings. Thanks again to AliExpress for providing me with this adapter. And let's get on with the rest of the review. Now you might be asking, why not just use a WaveBird? Well, the WaveBird is a great controller. Uh, some of its downsides are it doesn't have rumble. Uh, these aren't made anymore, uh, and they're just getting more and more expensive. So if you want an alternative controller that has rumble, well, the Blue Retro Dongle will let you use controllers you can use for other systems, such as your Xbox One or PlayStation, uh, with your GameCube, which is pretty cool. All right, let's start looking at the controllers. Okay, so this is my Nintendo GameCube. It's a launch model. Uh, and this is the blue retro dongle, and we'll just put it into port one, and we'll turn it on, and then we'll see the little light glows. Um, I actually discovered that my uh, five volt line didn't work on my GameCube's uh, controller board uh, because of this. Uh, my WaveBird worked fine. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Blue Retro, for diagnosing my issue. I had no idea. Uh, it also meant Rumble didn't work. So this uses the Rumble uh, power to uh, well function. So, okie dokie, uh, it's all lit up and it's doing its thing. And now we can pair a controller. I thought we'd start with uh, a Nintendo first party controller. This is the Nintendo Switch. So we'll just pair that. And I think we just have to hit the pairing button on the thing as well. Okay, all right, it's paired. Okay, here we are with a Nintendo Switch Pro controller and it makes for a great GameCube controller as well. Um, that being said, this controller doesn't have analog triggers. So we're gonna take a look at another controller which does the Xbox One controller. Okay, it's in pairing mode again, and now I thought we'd try the Xbox One controller. So we'll just put it in the pairing mode, and it's paired. Okay, cool. Now one of the reasons why I wanna try this is it has analog triggers, just like the GameCube. But are they functional? Uh, that's the question. Okay, so I'm back with the Xbox One controller, and again, it does everything you'd expect it to do with the added benefit of having analog triggers. So if I lightly press right flood, we'll just do a little bit of a dribble just like that, and then I can push all the way. You know, little dribble, all the way. And if you're not sold on that, I'll show you uh, a like debug program showing the trigger sensitivity. Okay, so we're here in a debug program, and again, you can see here I have the trigger, and if I lightly push down on the trigger, you can see, you know, it goes up and down. We have full analog movement on these triggers, which is perfect. I was actually a little bit worried about that, but nope, full analog support. So, you know, if you don't have a WaveBird or something, this is a great alternative, especially since the WaveBirds are one old and two uh, getting more expensive as time goes on. And now I guess we'll move on to the next controller. Okay, this next controller is a bit niche. This is the Nintendo Switch uh, Nintendo 64 controller. Now you might be wondering why would you want to use this? Well, uh, Ocarina of Time was 
put on GameCube along with Master Quest. So if you wanted to play that with the original controller it was intended for, you could use this. So you just put this in the pairing mode, just like that, right? And then you push this button here, put it in the pairing, same deal as all the others, and boom, it's connected. And now let's take a look at Ocarina of Time. Okay, so this is a Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller, and we're playing Ocarina of Time, the GameCube version. You can tell that by looking at the buttons. They're, they're the wrong colors. But it works perfectly fine, and it's already mapped correctly. The C buttons do what they need to do. Z button does what it needs to do, etc. So this is... Um, if you really wanted to play Ocarina of Time on a GameCube with an N64 controller, you totally can, and that's pretty neat. Finally, I wanted to try this Super Nintendo controller for the Nintendo Switch uh, with the GameCube, uh, so I could use it with the Game Boy Player and play some Game Boy Advance games uh, with a good D-pad, because the GameCube D-pad kind of uh, is awful. So let's pair this, so we put it in the pairing mode. And we put this up, oh, it's already paired. And yeah, we're ready to go. Okay, so I'm here with the Nintendo Switch Online Super Nintendo controller. And why, why would I want to use this with the GameCube? Well, specifically for the Game Boy Player. The GameCube D-pad is awful, and the Super Nintendo D-pad is fantastic. Um, and again, it works great with games like this. Of course, you have more than enough buttons for Game Boy Advance, and it feels great to use. You know, you got your shoulders, etc. So one perk of the Blue Retro software is you can actually reconfigure the mappings. So by default, this was A, this was B. I've done this to the A and this to be B because that feels more natural for me when I'm playing Game Boy Advance games uh, on my TV. So yeah, that's uh, three controllers. Um, I guess now we'll go into some of the more advanced uh, configuration options such as button mappings, etc. Okay, what you see here is the Blue Retro web config. You can access this by going to blueretro.io. There's a link shown below. From this page, you can do various things, such as configure button layouts and upgrade the firmware. We'll be looking at those two features. First things first, let's go to Blue Retro Advanced Config. Next, you're gonna to wanna to connect to the Blue Retro receiver. Note, you need to put the device into pairing mode. The light should be flashing when you're doing this. Click Connect Blue Retro, and you should see it in your Bluetooth dropdown menu. In my case, it's Blue Retro GC for GameCube, and we click Pair and Connect. Now we can change various configurations, particularly mapping. As I stated before, I used a Nintendo Switch SNES controller, and I changed the layout. So you would go SNES controller and GameCube. As you can see here, I changed the button layout to the way I like it. You can change it to the way you like it, which I think is pretty cool. And of course, there's a wide variety of controllers that you can use with the Blue Retro. Another critical feature you'll want to look at is the over-the-air firmware update. Now, I've already updated, so we can see here that it won't tell us that we need an update. So you can see right now, I'm on the latest firmware. Now, let's cut to some footage where I had not yet updated. Note, there'll be a link to go to the developer's webpage on itch.io, and you'll be able to download the latest firmware. Also, when you download the firmware, you'll be prompted to donate. I highly recommend throwing the developers a few bucks as that ensures the continued support of your Blue Retro receiver. Once you have the firmware, you can go ahead and upload it. And here is the upgrade process. Uh, I've sped it up. It can be quite slow, but that's it. I didn't really have any issues with this device out of the box, but I highly recommend upgrading to the latest firmware. That way, you know, any bugs you don't know about have been ironed out. And that pretty much wraps up the advanced configuration options I wanted to show you for the Blue Retro Receiver. And for those wondering, yes, it will work with the Nintendo Wii as long as that Wii has GameCube ports. And again, for those curious, yes, it will work with the Nintendo GameCube adapter for the Nintendo Switch. So now you can use, say, an Xbox 360 controller um, as a GameCube controller in Smash Ultimate for whatever reason, if you really wanted to, but hey, that's pretty cool. And I guess um, if anything supports analog triggers, I think Sunshine does, you can use this controller instead of a GameCube controller, which is uh, again, pretty neat. That about wraps it up for this video. Again, if you like this device, consider uh, using the link in the description below to pick one up. Uh, and of course, again, thanks AliExpress. Uh, you can use my code to save also a few bucks off your next order if it's over the threshold. And yeah, don't forget to look around, check out some of my other videos, like, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. 
And again, I do videos on all kinds of little gadgets, gizmos from home automation to retro consoles. You name it, I do it. It's fun. Anyway, see you next time. Bye.